Hello and welcome to Power Up. Just how big is the iPhone 12 Pro Max? How does it visually compare to some of the iPhones in the lineup? And how good is the new M1 chip that was announced in the November Apple event? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, if this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech news, reviews and comparisons, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I've put timestamps in the description if there are any parts in particular you want to jump straight to. So today we'll be unboxing the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, the gold and the midnight blue. But first, let's take a moment for some updates and news. First off, the PlayStation 5 has been released. Super exciting times, but it pains me that even though I did get a pre-order in, I was told that it'll possibly arrive in December. Some stores have been saying December 18th. I'll also be doing a spec video on the PS5 in the near future, taking a look at just how good of a console it is. There have been some reports of Amazon PS5 packages having the PS5s taken out and replaced with other items such as pet food. That is absolutely horrendous. There have also been rumors that the successor to the Samsung Galaxy S20 is said to be called either the Galaxy S21 or the Galaxy S30. Rumor has it that it will be announced earlier than the previous years, in early January 2021, with a rumored event date of January 14th and January 29th as the release day. It may possibly be using a Snapdragon 875 processor, but we'll have to wait and see. And finally, the VR headset, the HP Reverb G2, has been officially released with the first customers receiving their headsets. This VR headset price sits between the Oculus Quest 2 and the Valve Index at $599. If you were to pre-order one now, you would expect to receive it in January or February 2021. In the previous video, I mentioned that the Oculus Quest 2 ran at a refresh rate of 72 Hz until Oculus decide to enable the 90 Hz feature. Well, good news, there has been an update and playing games at 90 Hz while using the link cable to your PC is now possible. So Apple had the November event announcing the new Mac releases, including a MacBook Air, Mac Mini and a MacBook Pro 13 inch. The event begins by introducing the new M1 processor. Apple are moving away from using Intel processors for the Mac to their very own Apple processors. This is the M1 chip. They say it has been designed and optimized for Apple's most popular low power systems, focusing on performance and power efficiency. They have done this by combining multiple chips into one SOC, which stands for System on Chip. Previous Macs have contained several separate chips, each having its own function, such as the CPU, memory, IO chip, which helps control input-output devices on your computer, and a security chip. This integration combines them all and allows the system to have higher efficiency and better performance. They go on to explain the Unified Memory Architecture, or UMA. In simple terms, this allows each system to share the same memory, which can then be accessed more quickly, instead of each system having to copy the required data into its own little space to be able to use it. This helps to significantly improve power efficiency and performance of the system. The M1 chip has been built using 5 nanometer technology, containing 16 billion transistors. Now having more transistors helps to make the system faster among some other influencing factors. One way it does this is by having more parallel processing power, allowing for more things to be done at the same time. M1 is said to deliver higher performance at lower power levels than the latest PC laptop chips. And they say M1 can match the peak performance of the latest laptop PC processors using only a quarter of the power. The same applies for the graphics processing unit of the M1, using only one third of the power to match the peak performance of the latest PC laptop GPU. 
M1 is able to run 11 trillion operations per second, making tasks like video editing a lot smoother and faster. Rendering times are said to be up to six times faster, which is massive. Apple then went on to announce the MacBook Air, having a CPU of up to three and a half times faster than the previous generation. The coolest thing to me about the MacBook Air is that it doesn't have a fan, which makes the machine super silent. The starting price is $999. The next Mac that was announced was the Mac Mini, having a CPU of up to three times faster than the previous generation. The Mac Mini has two USB-A ports, a HDMI port, two USB-C ports, and an Ethernet port. The starting price is $699. And finally, the new 13-inch MacBook Pro was announced. The CPU is now up to 2.8 times faster than the previous model, as well as having five times faster graphics. The starting price is $1,299. Okay, so back to iPhones. I've just been staring at these boxes and I am pumped to get these open. So right, without further ado, let's get unboxing. Okay, so here we have the gold and the midnight blue. Let's start with the gold. Wow, and look at that color and that matte finish. Let's take it out. Wow, that is really shiny. See, it is getting a bit fingerprinty over here. Okay, we can see, like the iPhone 12s, there's no power block. And again, we have this booklet, this image act tool, and one Apple sticker. And again, we have a USB-C to lightning cable. Now let's open the Midnight Blue. Oh wow, now that isn't a blue that I expected from the videos, just like the other ones, I think the colors of both blue are different to what I expected. And I thought I'd like the iPhone 12's blue more, but this blue is really nice. And those cameras are really sticking out, a lot more than the 11 Pro Max's did. They do both have a really premium feel. And that is actually a really massive phone. I'm really excited about using the blue. This is actually gonna be my main phone. Now let's take a quick look and see what they look like compared to the other iPhones in the lineup. And let's throw in a couple of others too. So we have the iPhone SE, two iPhone 12s, an iPhone 12 Pro, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And here we can see how they compare in size. So here we can see the slightly bigger screen on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And we can see that there is a small difference in the size of the boxes. So there we have it. I do love this year's Flat Edge lineup. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. It really does mean a lot to me. 
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. Peace.